Okay, so it's a, it's a minute past three, um, so I think we should kick off. Uh, welcome everybody to our uh, Making Tax Digital uh, for VAT and other taxes webinar. Um, I'm uh, Tarek Hussain, uh, I'm the CEO at McAlvin's, and uh, I've uh, lost uh, control of my mouse, there it is, back again. Um, that's me, as you can see. Uh, I'm CEO of McAlvin's. Uh, we do a number of these webinars throughout the year. We try to do at least one a month if we can. Um, they tend to take, uh, you know, whatever's topical at the time. Um, and in particular, leading up to the deadlines that we're going to be talking about in a moment, um, it's MTD. I'm joined today with um, Phil, who heads up tax at McAlvin's, and Darren, um, who is our guru on everything tech and cloud oriented and, and a bit more than that as well for that matter. So, um, as I said, we're gonna be talking about um, what is making tax digital and how it affects you. So uh, without further ado, I will be passing over to Phil. Uh, I think this is Darren's bit, isn't it? Oh, is it is. Let me <laughs> take that away from let, let, let the tech guru take it away from the tax guru. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Um, exactly. I threw yeah, myself. No, perfect. <laughs> yeah. So what is making tax digital? So making tax digital is still firmly at the heart of HMRC's plans to build a trusted modern tax system. And the long-term plan is of course to deliver a tax admin system that is fully digital. Um, working closer to real time and providing more all round resilience. Aside from that and linking it back to the tech, which is my passion, it's, um, it's also helping drive the development of new software products that support um, good tax compliance, as well as keeping UMTD compliant and reporting to HMRC on a quarterly basis. We will talk a little bit later about the wider benefits um, that MTD has brought across for businesses beyond managing their their tax affairs. Um, but for now, we can move on to the next slide. Yeah, and I should just, sorry to interrupt uh, Mr. Tech Guru, because um, I've made another hiccup, which is uh, pointing out to everybody that there is the opportunity to ask questions throughout this webinar. The, you should have in your Zoom application uh, a QA and a um, box. Um, so if you go into that, you can raise a question. And, and if it's opportune, we'll, we'll, we'll answer it on the fly. If not, then we'll leave it till the end. But please do, uh, do raise any questions that you have as, as we go through. Thank you. So has an MTD for that already got underway for some businesses? It has indeed. Um, if it feels like us accountants have been talking about MTD for years and years, it's because you really have. Um, back in 2019, MTD for that became mandatory for VAT registered businesses with taxable turnover above the 85K threshold. Um, and it was actually HMRC's last reported figures that show that well over 1.5 million businesses have, have signed up since, um, including nearly a third of non-mandated VAT registered businesses who have joined voluntarily and well over 10 million returns being made through um, to 31st of March 21. So a lot of action there. Um, but although we were forewarned about the reform, um, accountants and business owners alike, we found ourselves in a rush to ensure that you know, we and our clients were, were compliant with the new transition to the digital filing um, for the use of cloud accounting software. So for many business, that, was, that could have been a complete shift from on-premise solutions such as Sage 50, um, Opera, to MTD compliant solutions such as your your QuickBooks, and, and pretty much all other cloud-based systems currently on the market. But you'll see that there isn't a soft landing for new businesses now. Um, any late submissions can result in penalties. So if you're not already MTD registered, then now is really the best time and the only time to get the ball rolling um, to make sure that we're compliant when the time comes. Yeah, and I think don't underestimate, as you said, the, the, the amount of work that's involved because if you're using a system that's just simply not compliant, dated, and you've got a transition all that data to something else then uh, you know there's a bit of heavy lifting there to do so uh, do, do bear that in mind and reach out to us i'm correlating a lot of the uh, gray hairs i have back to april 2019 when we were all preparing for vat um, mtd anyway so uh, yeah let's let's save my hair uh, hairline please guys 
Um, I think your hairline is fairly safe, though. In all, yeah, in we had this enough. discussion the other day on proceeding, not re reseeding, as they say. So, um, yeah. Can we <laughs> save mine? <laughs> it's uh, too let's, late. Let's, is it let's, move on. let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what is changing in April and who will be affected? So, again, you know, going back to July 2020, that was when plans were announced to extend MTD to apply to all that registered businesses from April 22. Um, and that's regardless of their, of their thresholds. So for those who are not already registered, what this means is that your VAT returns will now need to be reported quarterly through MTD compliance software. Um, naturally, there'll be many businesses who aren't quite ready with that at the moment, but with the final phase of MTD now underway, it's imperative that we find um, an action, the next steps um, to get you ready for April. And we'll highlight exactly how we at, uh, at McCalvin's within the group are able to ensure a smooth uh, transition later in the webinar. But let's take a look at what businesses need to do to prepare. Handing you over to Mr. Stevens. Thanks, Darren. Uh, next slide, please. So we, we mentioned earlier on, um, obviously, it's a, a digital platform that we'll be heading towards. Um, HMRC will not be prepared or promoting or, or giving out their own software. So some some firms, or sorry, some businesses still log into uh, an HMRC portal and file using HMRC um, digital options. That is not going to be possible. You will have to have some type of third-party software um, or use an accountant, which obviously, you know, we use third-party software anyway. Um, the requirements of the new MTD system are that the records must be kept in digital form. They must be preserved in digital form. Um, the, the records will be provided to HMRC on a voluntary basis with the tax data, and it must be in such a format that the revenue can easily receive the information at their end via whatever platform you, you choose to use. I think the rationale behind it is that this will all be scanned into the, the HMRC system connect and the algorithms will be looking for uh, certain pinch points or areas of concern, which will then result in probably an HMRC VAT check or in more serious cases, an inquiry. Uh, you'll continue to submit them in the same quarterly uh, frequency that you do at the moment, um, albeit it's a slightly different mechanism by which you will be filing. Uh, next slide, please. Come on it, Phil. <laughs> So what happens if you aren't compliant in time? So the penalty regime is also changing. Um, those of you who've been unfortunate enough to, to get a VAT late filing penalty at the moment will know that it's under the default surcharge regime. Um, that's being abolished and moving towards a new point system. So every time you file late, you'll receive a point from HMRC and be notified of that. Uh, the point system is a little bit trickier to understand than the default system was. Um, most people, I've, I've got a note of it here, most people will be on quarterly VAT returns. So your annual penalty threshold will be four points. Therefore, if you are late filing on four consecutive occasions, you will get a point for each one. However, it will also extend to other taxes as well. And we'll come on to things like uh, corporate tax, MTD, which is a couple of years away yet, and the same with income tax. The, the net result is that you can quite easily rack up the points quite quickly. And at that point, you will then be charged a penalty for any future submissions that are late. Um, this penalty threshold that's breached will then be enforced for a two-year period. So it's not a case of you can get a couple of returns in afterwards and everything will sort of revert to back to normal. Um, it will stay with you so that if you then, for instance, uh, file late on a third return, because you're still within that 24 month period, you'll get another penalty. So the, the idea being that the, the penalty regime is slightly fairer because there are those VAT returns that are submitted where you don't necessarily have any VAT to pay. You're in a repayment position um, and at the moment, the, the penalties are relatively low for that because it's a percentage of tax due. Well, if there's no tax to pay, then the penalty is pretty much wiped out. This was this is moving more towards the kind of penalties we've seen for income tax now, where it's on a filing basis rather than a tax loss basis. Um, 
as I said, yeah, it's a 24 month period. It will it will continue to to rack up as as time goes on. Um, any further failures to file on time will just extend that 24 month period longer and longer, um, and it will become quite expensive for those who routinely file late. Even more so if you think about those businesses which file on a monthly basis, for instance. They're typically the ones that tend to file or, or miss the odd return here and there. So you've got more instances that late filing could apply. Okay, okay. the next slide, please. NTD, as I mentioned just a minute ago, it will be applying to corporate tax and income tax as well. Um, so MTD came in April 19, I think Dara mentioned earlier, but the discussions around it started way back in, I think it was something like 2015. So this has been rattling on for quite a few years now. Um, should have been in play this year for most of the other taxes. Um, I think it was income tax from this year and corporate tax from next year, but with Brexit, the pandemic, etc., cetera, um, things have been kicked back a little bit. Uh, but if you imagine that you are a VAT registered business and you also have, if you look under the April 24 for MTD for income tax, say a buy to let uh, business with income above 10,000, you will have to file quarterly returns for each of those businesses. So those with multiple businesses or multiple streams that fall within the definition of an MTD compliant business will have to file a lot more tax returns, which in itself is going to create a lot more work a lot more administration um, at the moment they've said that payments for income tax and corporate tax will stay under the current regime but i think that's code for we will change it we're just not at the, at the start of the respective uh, implementation dates but it's it's widely anticipated that income tax and corporate tax will move to a, a, a generic quarterly payment process and um, just in terms of these dates being pushed back, Phil, to in particular, I'm thinking the the um, corporation tax one, which is now sitting in you know, 2026, which seems yeah. like years away. But obviously, we know from experience that those <laughs> years quickly creep up on you. Yeah. Um, is it is there the chance? Do you think that they could actually bring that forward if they they feel that things are progressing well on on the VAT, for example? Uh, potentially, I think it's unlikely because most of the, the, the reasons why these dates have been pushed back is because the IT system isn't able mm -hmm. to cope. Um, going back to the, the late payment uh, things we just discussed, um, there's been a recent announcement that the, the penalties won't actually apply from April 22 when MTD goes live. It'll actually apply from January 23. And it's simply mm -hmm. because the, the IT system at HMRC won't be able to cope with the new penalty regime, so they need another nine months to sort of correct it. So it's unlikely that they'll they'll bring it forward. Uh, if anything, it might go back by another year or so. Uh, but it is coming. Okay, I do like our um, our roadmap graphic. By the way, I think it's great. So well done to our marketing team on that. <laughs> um, okay. So how can McAlvin's uh, group help? Um, Phil, I think you know if you can give us a little bit more insight into, you know how how you know we can be supporting clients, in particular over the next couple of months, but then you know forward thinking as well, uh, forward planning rather I should say, uh, for the other elements. Yeah, I mean, there's obviously the, the the overview. We can see what software you're using or not using. Um, we can recommend what we would use, how we would go about doing it. Uh, we can help with the setup. Um, so purely from a, an administration and a compliance level, you know, it's obviously our kind of bread and butter of what we do on a, a daily basis, really, uh, amongst the, the team. I think in the longer term, and, and I think in a way it will help because you're getting more visibility over what happens with all that registered businesses. So it, it can help in terms of planning opportunities, seeing if there are any particular areas um, from a, a VAT perspective or the wider income tax, corporate tax perspective, um, you know, the, that increased visibility and, and continual kind of reviewing of information is, is really what 
me as a tax advisor, that's the stuff that we we need and where we can op- identify opportunities for, for clients. Indeed. And I think I've just gone back to the um, to the roadmap slide because I think I did want to mention another point on this. And I know we started this webinar saying MTD uh, for that, uh, which is obviously what's, what's upon us now in the next, uh, literally the next six weeks. Um, but what's on the horizon, obviously, is the income tax, MTD for income tax. And the fact that, you know, it, it captures pretty much anybody that is doing any form of rental business uh you know and or any type of business with income over ten thousand, uh, which i would have thought you know even you know some of these sort of very small industries uh part-time self-employed type things that people might be doing from home are captured by this and it's going to create an incredible amount of um, administration i would have thought for those individuals, which they, which you know, the main fact struggle with. So, I think it's. I just wanted to highlight the point that it's you know, very important to get things in place. And whilst you may not need a McAlvin's to do all of your bookkeeping and and, and you know tax returns on a ten thousand pound turnover business, possibly, um, but you'd certainly need us to help with sort of the year end aspects or to help you set up the right systems. Um, so that you can administer that business, um, you know, efficiently, because all these things that have been brought about, superficially at least, would appear to create additional costs for, for um, for businesses and and uh, and individuals. Yeah, I mean, there's the software cost, isn't there? Because, like I said, HMRC aren't providing the software, so you, you have to have that third party record keeping and submission software. Um, if you don't have it, then there's the the increased cost for your advisors in doing so and the you know the routine uh, compliance that will be undertaken i think if you think about it from an individual point of view it's quite you could quite easily see how you could get into the position where you're filing you know three lots of quarterly returns if you're you know you're doing your vat you're doing your um for, for more than one business you're doing your property portfolio income mm. it's quite easy that you could end up with you know multiple quarterly returns then the catch-all return and then the overriding tax return which everything's going to be reported on yeah, um, it's a lot of work. it is and i think it's worth highlighting as well that the inc- what you're sending to the revenue is purely income and expenditure so it's sort of money in versus money out um which i know vat is typically done on but things like income tax and corporate tax you don't get you won't be putting the tax adjustments through the mtd quarterly filing however any tax adjustments will hit the return at the end of the year and if there's a lot of them it's going to create that illusion with hmrc that well they're expecting this kind of figure based upon the quarterly returns however profit is much higher much lower for whatever reason and that in Mm -hmm. itself could could lead to sort of further checks and inquiries. I think for me, the the income tax MTD is the one that I'm worried about the most because corporate, most business, well, pretty much all corporate returns are filed online now. Um, yeah. I think most people have gotten used to VAT online, but it's income tax that's the one, you know, like you said earlier, there's a lot of these smaller sort of part-time businesses and people with properties and, and whatnot they're the ones who I think are going to need the most amount of education um, and sort of bringing around to the new way of thinking. Yeah. I wonder how many thousands of uh, businesses are caught by this or individuals are caught by this um, MTD for income tax. I think I, I remember reading not so long ago that, that, that it's going to be relatively rare to have somebody who's not caught by MTD somewhere along the line as an individual. Obviously, if you're PAYE, then it doesn't really matter. But anybody who's yeah. got any kind of business or any kind of, sort of investment portfolio, like a, a, a rental property portfolio, it's very unlikely that they'll fall under that 10K because just by definition, most most businesses will generate more than that. So mm-hmm. I think I read something like 80% will, will end up being within uh income tax mtd in, t- in terms of volumes it probably dwarfs anything that's you know the on the corporate on on mtd for that for example it's probably significantly more than that i would have thought 
Yeah, I mean, the value, they, the value won't be, the volume will be. I think they, I think the last records were, or the last numbers are something like nearly 30 million taxpayers in the UK. And I think of those 30 million, something like 18 that need to submit tax returns. So even if you took, say, half of that, that's 9 million people that would have to use MT or have to file under MTD. I think it's yeah. nearer to kind of 15 million. Um, it's a serious number, isn't it? It's a fair old amount, isn't it? Indeed. Okay, thank you for that. Um, so there's there's some other things as well. I mean, it's not all, all bad news, not all doom and gloom. Um, nobody likes taxes, of course. Um, understanding them is painful enough. That's why we have people like Phil, <laughs> you know, who loves it. <laughs> uh, but then on top of that, we have to pay them as well, which makes it even more painful. Um, but, you know, with, I mean, HMRC don't always come out with the greatest ideas. Um, but I think there have been some unintentional benefits of um, MTD and uh, that, you know, we've certainly seen some of the client, our clients uh, benefit from some of the work that we've done to help them become MTD compliant and the knock on effect that's had to their business in terms of operating more efficiently and effectively. Um, but I won't steal um, any more of Darren's uh, thunder. Um, Darren, tell us all about the good stuff that's unintentionally come out of um, MTD programs of uh, HMRC. Absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah, the shift to MTD compliance software, um, you know, in, in the interim, it was a headache to a lot of businesses, um, you know, but now that they find that the introduction of cloud solutions have provided you know, many other benefits to how they operate on both a financial and um, operational level. So, you know, we at McAlvin's, we're, we're platinum partners of Xero. Um, and, you know, by having our clients' records on Xero or, or other cloud software, we're able to take advantage of a whole world of automation that this brings for us and the client. So, you know, from connecting your bank accounts to allow automatic feeds, um, setting up bank rules that pretty much reconcile your bank um, for you with a very light touch, um, but then also streamlining, you know, whole different areas of the finance function, such as you know, credit control, uh, payables function, and things like that. But ultimately, all of these things, they contribute for business owners, you know, taking, um, you know, having immediate real-time, um, you know, data at their fingertips and that enables them to sort of run their business from anywhere, really. And, and in a remote world that we work in now, it, it's, it's pretty much perfect for that. Um, but something that isn't highlighted enough, in my opinion, is the value adds collaboration with us as the accountant, um, you know, not just for MTD, but just in cloud in general. Um, so we as accountants have access to an, a, an array of tools that bolt on to the likes of Xero and other cloud software. So it allows us to take a really proactive approach with, with our clients when it comes to advisory services. And before I talk about the app stack you see on screen here, just to give you some context about what I mean with a recent example where we've helped a client. So client of ours, unfortunately, they, you know, they were really successful business prior to, to COVID-19. And, and even now they, they've had some concerns about the company's ability to survive the next six, 12 months. So, what they've been trying to do is, is source some, some funding to help them get them out of this short-term hole. Um, they were declined by various lenders. So reached out to us to see if there's anything we could do, any recommendations we could make. And simply having their data in zero, we were able to integrate this to another third party application, which we partnered with. And what this application did is analyze the accounting data, the financials and provided recommendations and, and sort of provided suitability of alternative funding options. And this took a matter of minutes. So it doesn't work for everyone, but in this particular case, um, an application for funding was made via this app um, and it was accepted within a week of the initial concerns being raised to us by our clients. So, you know, it, that's just one small thing that, you know, is really saving our clients, but ultimately um, we're trying to give as much back um, to you guys with the use of cloud accounting anyway. So that was a really, really good example of, of how it works for us here. But um, yeah, you can see our app stack on screen. So within McAlvin's across the group, we have a dedicated uh, team of tech enthusiasts, um, not just myself, working with clients to recommend and implement cloud software most suited to their business processes. Um, you know, starting with the finance function at the core, we're able to help them operationally as well, um, looking at other areas of their business, their industry, 
to really find um, apps that could alleviate all of the mundane tasks um, that, that come with it. So what you see on screen here, it's just a small portion of what we offer. Um, our team constantly review um, apps, um, developments, new apps, um, changes, just to always make sure that our clients are using the best on the market to suit their business processes. We have app stacks that are bespoke to um, various industry sectors as well. Um, and Tarek will, will run through some of those on, on the next slide. But ultimately, there is an app for anything. Um, us as Zero um, Platinum Partners, we have access to over a thousand app integrations. Um, so we really we are well equipped to build specific app stacks to you and your business. You may be in you know the same um, industry as a lot of our clients, but there'll be certain apps that are more suited to your way of working, how you want your business to run. And we pretty much sit down with you and, and understand exactly how you want your business to run and then recommend those solutions. So hospitality, yeah, that, that's a huge one. We'll talk about that um, a little bit later. Um, we also have e-commerce, manufacturing, property management, um, all of which we have in-house implementers um, and provide support to our clients in those areas as well. Yeah, and I think if it's, if it's not if it's not sort of clear to everybody, I think the the key here is that these are very specific to the sectors. This isn't just a bookkeeping package um, with um, you know some basic reporting on it. I mean, these are applications that really support operating that business more more efficiently, more effectively. And I think in the case of uh, this one that just happens to be on the screen, the screen property management, you know, Arthur and release. I mean, it, it, you know, pretty much all aspects of administration and property management are covered within that one application, you know, supported by some of the other automation that's there as well. So uh, Yeah, absolutely. Well, talking of, of release, you know, it allows um, portfolio managers to completely control the whole process in one platform. So from onboarding new tenants to, you know, digitally storing requests and signature for various documents for them to approve, um, you know, managing rental agreements, like the, the list goes on. So yeah, if you are in these industries, sorry, sorry, I was going to say if you yeah, are yeah. in this sorry. industry, then <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, please reach out. Happy to, to have a chat with you guys to, to see if any of these fit fit you guys really yeah i think you don't need to be a letting agent a state agent for you know particularly this property management I and mean, some of these work very very well for landlords that have got sort of half a dozen prop to half a dozen or so properties with you know multiple tenants in, in the buildings there you know there's a lot of admin that needs to be done for those and um, it does enable you know a landlord to look after their properties in a, in a very efficient manner i think an organized manner as well uh, which which only helps with with all the other compliance that needs to be done whether that's for mtd or you know whatever it might be uh, for that matter okay good stuff i think uh, that brings us uh, pretty much to um any uh, q a that there might be um let's just have a look and see what we've got uh, there's there's one question for you, Darren, um, which is, um, do you have any examples of how we've helped businesses in the sort of you know hospitality um, space? Um, yeah, absolutely. I'm assuming from a from a tech side of things. Um, yeah, um, just coming out of COVID as well, really, and even during when the first lockdown was eased and, and restaurants were able to open. Um, we have a client that was a really successful dining restaurant, um, but because they weren't able to adapt quickly to the changes due to the pandemic, they had to close and couldn't even offer takeaway services. And the reason why they couldn't offer takeaway services is because they didn't have the right systems in place that would allow them to operate even when closed. Um, and the systems I'm talking about here are cloud EPOS solutions, so such as Lightspeed. I think this one in particular was Goodtill. Um, the software we, we sort of introduced and implemented here. And what was interesting about Goodtill is that although they weren't offering um, the likes of Deliveroo, Uber Eats um, and Just Eat as well, uh, what we were able to do was implement this EPOS solution, implement an add-on 
that brought enabled them to sort of broaden their reach to the local areas using those delivery platforms all in one platform. Uh, sorry, I said platform a lot there. Um, I, hope, I hope you get the gist, but we were able to have them serve the local area just through the use of those cloud applications and the integration to the likes of Deliveroo. Um, so all of that sales activity was then automatically being captured via the integration to zero, um, which meant that you know they didn't have to spend hours or, or days in some cases providing you know the daily or weekly Z reports to us as the accountant to then manually process into the account. So yeah, that that business was able to sort of bounce back, and you know happy to say that they're still going strong now. Yeah, I think so. Another project that we've been looking at recently as well is. Uh, where people have been with one, you know, for example, Deliveroo and bringing, you know, using some of these systems, these EPOS systems that you're talking about with more integrated solutions. So, um, you know, you might be with Deliveroo, but you can just as well work with um, Just Eat or Uber Eats or any number of other ones that are out there. Uh, and that's another area that we've, uh, we've, we've got more and more involved with. Yeah, absolutely. I think the idea there was instead of restaurant owners having, um, you know, a separate portal for each of those. Um, we actually introduced an app that brings all of them into one. So if anything, although they were still getting the same outreach in terms of using those three platforms individually, what it done was save them a, a hell of a lot of time in managing that process internally. So it wasn't us in that case, always necessarily getting the benefit as the accountant, but actually helping the, the staff internally help run those orders and, and procure those orders a lot quicker. Um, and hopefully uh, a lot less stressful as well. Okay. All right. Uh, there's no other questions here, Darren. Um, so uh, I think that's a, a nice, short, brief um, webinar. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Thank you um, to our marketing team, uh, Darren and Phil, for uh, the excellent content. And uh, if you do have any questions, you know, feel free to reach out to any one of us. Um, there will be an email coming out later on if you really, really want to see this again. There will be a recording on our website as well at some point. So um, without, yeah, that's it. Everything. Thank you very much.